Kristen Evans garnered national attention when she made the decision to release a horrifying video it was inside of her home surveillance camera of an alleged domestic violence dispute with her ex-boyfriend at the time, Zach Stacy. Well, today, in a daytime exclusive, two and a half months after the release of that video that resulted in formal charges being brought up against Zach Stacy, Kristen Evans will be joining me and she it says she's ready to shed new light on that video and the aftermath, what her life is like now. I have to warn you all, this video is incredibly disturbing to watch. And we had to actually blur some of that video to broadcast it on daytime television. It was the shocking video seen around the world, a violent attack caught on camera involving former NFL player Zach Stacy and his ex-girlfriend, Kristen Evans, in her Florida home with their five-month-old baby just a few feet away. In the video, Zach Stacy is seen slapping and punching Kristen Evans in the head before picking her up and throwing her across the room into the television, which then falls on her. You thought that was okay? And they gonna ruin relationships and come out undestructive? Kristen Evans calls 911 and details what happened. He threw me and hit me and looks like he busted my knee. I don't know. He threw me to my son. He hit me and hit my son. At our time. Zach Stacy left the scene before law enforcement arrived, sparking a statewide manhunt for his arrest and Kristen Evans filing a restraining order. Five days later, he was arrested at the Orlando airport after arriving on a flight from Nashville. Body camera video of the arrest shows Zach Stacy accusing Kristen Evans of staging the assault. It's just bitterness, man. That's what she did. It's the whole assault thing, she staged it. She set me up. Due to last minute schedule change, Kristen Evans, who had been at the hospital for her injuries, was unable to attend the bond hearing, and a judge granted a $10,000, $150 bond. With Zach Stacy released from jail, Kristen Evans says that she feared for her safety and requested another hearing. The judge denied her plea to increase the bond, but ordered that her ex boyfriend not return to the state of Florida except for his court appearances. Last week, almost three months after the alleged incident, Zach Stacy was formally charged by the state of Florida, and if found guilty, he could face up to 15 years in prison on aggravated battery. Joining us now, Tam Pham from Orlando, Florida, is Kristen Evans and her attorney, Tom Fighter. Kristen, um, thank you for being here. Tom, I know that you are here because this case is still pending, and you wanted to be here with uh, your client, uh, Kristen, I have to start with acknowledging your courage to continue to talk about this and tell the story. Our audience knows that I've um, worked with survivors of domestic violence for many, many years now. And I remember, um, like it was yesterday, the video being sent to me and people saying, can you believe this? Look at this video. Um, can't imagine living through what happened there. Let me go back to the incident. It, Five days before you released the video is when that happened. Uh, it was your home surveillance camera in the home. As I understand, Zach Stacy knew the cameras were in the home as well when you moved in. Yes, that's correct. So he was aware that the incident, uh, Kristen, was being videotaped or might be videotaped? He was definitely aware that there were cameras in the home, yes. You, when did you realize that the camera had caught the images? So um, I didn't look for the video until the police arrived. Um, I was trying to fix my cameras for weeks before that. I had issues with the Wi-Fi, but uh, the first time I actually found it was when the police arrived. Did you, so the police arrived, you didn't know that there was video, because this whole show is really looking at how video, how images help people be believed, tell their story. So the police get there. You don't know that it's on security video. I would imagine like a lot of us, you either have an app or something where you can look at the video yeah. itself. Is that what happened? Yeah, so um, originally I wasn't sure if it was even caught on video because like I said, you know, I was having issues with my cameras for weeks before that. Um, and for the other incidents that happened before that as well. So. Um, when I did find it, when the police were there, I was uh, a little bit relieved that I actually had the evidence this time. I've talked with 
victims of assault, and many times you hear people say they blacked out or they couldn't, you know, yeah. th your mind goes into a, a space of survival, especially when your baby is right there. Mm -hmm. Looking at the video, did it seem like, oh my God, that was me? That happened to me? Did it seem out of body like that? That's exactly how it felt. Um, I had to continue to convince myself that it wasn't a movie, that this was really my life. When you were watching, and we often do these, the context of being triggered by something, when you were watching it at that time, did you think, let me call my family? I'm just trying to go to that moment because it is so deeply disturbing and frightening to watch. Yeah, um, I was really embarrassed, actually, to tell really? my family. Um, I didn't want them to know what I had been going through. Uh, I felt like, you know, my mom went through something similar when I was younger, and um, I kind of felt like I failed her a little bit, that I was repeating the same pattern, um, and feel, felt like I failed my children as well. Your child, your five-month-old son, is on the couch in the video. When this was happening, um, we know the instinct is to protect our children. What was yes. going through your mind when you're defending yourself or trying to save your own life, but your baby's right there? I was just trying to stay conscious um, because we've had other, you know, incidences where I was afraid that he would take the baby then. I was afraid that he would do the same thing this time as well. So, um, you know, that's why you can hear me in the, in the video saying, Zach, Zach, the baby. You know, that's because I... He was right there, and I didn't want anything to happen to him. How long did this go on in the home that day? How long? It literally lasted three minutes. Wow. Everything that you saw in the video was the altercation. Kristen, I know I was struck by the fact that you said you were really embarrassed to share this with your family. That, again, is something we hear so often from survivors of domestic abuse. They hide it for many reasons, fear, shame, and embarrassment. In this case, take me through the decision to not only tell your family, but share it publicly. It was very difficult. Um, I have a group of amazing friends that were there to support me, that pushed me to continue to call the police to get an investigation on the case. And then, um, you know, release the video because they felt it was necessary in order to um, have accountability held. Which is incredible in this day and age. And listen, we know whether it's um, uh, making sure that police are not targeting individuals. That's why you have the body camera, which was also visible uh, when Zach Stacey was ultimately arrested. For many, many reasons. Having video has, in some ways, even the score for people who believe they might not have been heard or believed. So here you have Zach Stacey. He's not currently on an NFL team, but he was a former player. Um, and you coming out publicly could have lended itself to people saying, oh, this is another, you know, dispute between, you know, two people. She, as he alleged, wants money, whatever the allegations. But you have the tape there. When you hit sin and you started seeing the views, you know, it goes from one person viewing it to 100 to 1,000, and then you're at a million. You know, what, were you now more worried about your safety? Was this going to anger him, or would this help you get attention to save your life? It was like a catch-22. Um, I was very worried about my safety. Um, I had several people tell me, you know, maybe you should be quieter, so that you can ensure your safety, but I felt like if I stopped talking about it, that it would stop moving forward. And I also think, Kristen, often with domestic abuse, people might say, well, they had a fight, right? Or there was a fight. But when you see that video, no one walks away calling that a fight. No. No. Mm -mm. Tom, the police, though, looked at the video and when they came to Kristen's home after the 911 call, they filed the incident as a misdemeanor, and therefore they couldn't put out an arrest warrant for Zach Stacy. Um, the police gave us a statement, and they and they say that they investigated the case and thoroughly went through the details. But how, what do you make of their decision to see the video and then file it as a misdemeanor? 
Tamron, domestic violence generally is misdemeanor level here in Florida. It's only when it's aggravated, as it was clearly in this video. I mean, Zach Stacy threw Kristen Evans like a rag doll, causing her permanent injury. Uh, that's aggravated battery, and that's much different. So. Um, most domestic violence calls, however, are usually, they begin at the misdemeanor level. I'm glad that recently the state attorney's office made the decision to file as a, a felony on that count. Uh, and there are other videos. There are other incidents that are still pending with the state attorney's office here in Orlando, and we hope they pick up those charges as well. Kristen, going back to um, the, the reaction that Zach Stacy gave to authorities when he was arrested, um, alleging that this was staged, what 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 is your what is your reaction to that? I just I, I just shake my head. I mean, uh, how how could it possibly be staged? How did I stage him throwing me through my own television in front of my son? Why would I do that? Without that video to show an edited video of the surveillance tape, do you believe it would have been a harder? Um, a harder road for you to get people to understand your oh, story. Absolutely. Absolutely. We see women all the time with only pictures, you know, and I say only pictures, that's still enough, but it's not treated as if it is. Yeah, Tamron, I work with so many victims who are so disappointed because they, you know, make the domestic violence allegations and they're either not believed or their cases are not prosecuted for whatever reason. It's heartbreaking. Cameras are wonderful in the respect that they can help bring justice in cases like this, but there are so many other survivors out there that um, are just disappointed in the way their cases are handled with local prosecutors' offices. Kristen, another tape that is a big conversation, of course, is the video of Zach Stacy ultimately being arrested there. Uh, there was a statewide manhunt for him a week passed before he was arrested at the Orlando airport when you saw the video of him arrested did that bring relief? I'm sure some worry because here he's the father of your child. Like, what is that process for you like? It was mixed emotions all around. Um, you know, it's heartbreaking and devastating, and I wish he had never done this in the first place. Um, but at the same time, you know, I was relieved a little bit that I was seeing some kind of justice mm -hmm. served, um, and then, you know, disappointment again following. I want to know, we reached out to Zach Stacy and his attorney, and he had no comment.